Hey y'all. All right. We are back out here in the garage again. I have a viewer who has posted a question about the uh, about his particular 318. It's in a uh, W100, W150 truck, Dodge truck. He wants to know a little bit more about why is it stumbling or uh, skipping when he goes to accelerate. Well, actually, he didn't say accelerate. So this kind of ties into the video I uh, made just recently about giving me enough information about your questions, you know, details. So I'm having to kind of fill in here and there. So, but he's given me enough. I think I can like help him out, I hope. So let's get started. Oh, before we go much further, I do want to say thank you so much to everyone for the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. Tremendously helpful. Appreciate it. You know, just thank you. Uh, up over 1,370 subscribers now, so it's, just, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I just, I, I'm like still bowled over by some of this, you know, because... I'm not used to that. All right, let's get on with it though, okay? All right, now we look here. Here's a typical Holly. This is a 2280, <laughs> Holly 2280 carburetor. Now, one of the things to be aware of, uh, not just with this, but with any carburetor if you're trying to accelerate and it's falling on its face, look at your accelerator pump. That's going to be the first place I'm going to look at. Um, accelerator pump leakage sometimes can be adjusted by bending these linkage rods here. If you don't have a Holly 2280, you have like say a Carter BBD, similar kind of setup. Okay, there's a plunger inside here. Let me see if I can find one of those plungers. Uh, let's see. I'll tell you what. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Accelerator pump. Plunger. Okay. Now, this one um, may be different than yours, but that's okay because they're all very similar. This one has a uh, silicone rubber gasket. Uh, flange here. It flanges out, okay, or flares out, okay. Now in the old days they used to make these out of leather and you would like lubricate them uh, for soak them in oil for like a couple of hours or something before you put them in. Nowadays they all come like this and uh, this one's getting kind of hard and stiff however it is kind of cold out here so. But here's where they go in at um, if they get worn or something, they don't want to work real well, and they will create a very weak uh, accelerator pump signal. Your accelerator plunger, when it plunges down into that bore right there, what's going to happen is, is the fuel is going to come out. Here we go. Perfect, 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 perfect. The fuel is, this is a Carter BBD, by the way. Okay, it's similar in concept to that that uh, that holly over there. I get the right parts and pieces. Wait a minute. Can this work? Well, no. Doggone it. Okay, well, anyway, what happens is this part goes all the way down in there, okay? This one isn't for this carburetor, but that's okay. We'll just pretend it is. And then this part goes on top like that. Your fuel will come out, will come through. Let me set this on here, just or set it up. The fuel is going to come out of those little tubes right there, okay, on both sides. 
the fuel comes up through here and you can see this these emulsion tubes okay you see the holes there so they're kind of emulsifying as they come up through there trying to get a little air into the fuel that's coming through there they come out now when you sock down on the accelerator pump like so I don't know if this carburetor may be dry maybe not I don't know for sure so we'll look down in here I hope you can see down in there okay nothing's coming out okay all right but when you rack on that okay you should see fuel squirting out of these tubes right here okay when the air rushes through here it creates a, a vacuum and, a, and it pull in a venturi effect and it pulls that fuel through there down into the carburetor the rest of the way into the carburetor and down into the intake manifold now that is important for acceleration okay because the rest of the time when you're just going along at a steady state you don't necessarily need the accelerator pump okay so whenever you whack on that throttle a little bit and you need that little extra bit of fuel to help push the car push the engine up in the rpms a little bit to enrich in the mixture because you now you've got all of this air that's flowing in okay so when we go and we open up the barrels here all the way like that now you know let's say we're cruising along we're like this okay and then we open it up the rest of the way and then guess what happens well that has to see some more fuel you can't have this thing not seeing a little extra fuel a little extra shock of fuel because if you don't if it doesn't have that then you have that stumble okay so that's one reason why that's occurring another let's go uh check the d150 here i hadn't run it in a while so i'm just letting it idle so a little commercial here okay we're in pretty good shape there i think yeah temperature's good been running about five minutes or so Maybe about seven minutes anyway um okay but another area where things can get a little screwball and get messed up is in the distributor uh first of all right off the bat before you dive into the carburetor make sure your ignition timing is is good okay um you want to make sure your ignition timing is good use yourself a uh use a timing light okay i mean you know you see a lot of guys you know they're over here doing it by ear you know uh-huh uh-huh you yeah, know yep yep mm -hmm. you know, they're twisting that distributor and getting it right and they're uh trying to get it right don't try to impress anybody okay just go get a timing light get yourself a, at least a decent one the dial back kind and uh they're great because you can kind of preliminary do a preliminary set of the timing so let's say the timing is supposed to be set at 12 degrees before top dead center but you go ahead and you say oh hey let's see what happens at you know you set it at 12 degrees and it's like eh, it's not all that impressive so maybe you go back and you set it for 15 degrees hmm. you set it for 15 degrees and all of a sudden wow you know big big change well that dial that dial back timing light you can do that with that um, I have one here let's see can I find it um, I think it's in my other toolbox over here let's look and see oh yeah right here it is okay. Okay. but see that dial right there on the back you see I can turn that button and I can get more timing or less 
okay? And then the engine will respond, okay? Then, and I can do that with this, okay? And then when it does that, it's like, you know, you get to see what it's like before actually going and adjusting the timing at the distributor, okay? So, check your distributor, make sure your timing is good, make sure the fly weights in the distributor for the advanced mechanism isn't messed up. They're not frozen. Uh, that can happen. And this distributor, you can't hardly see them. I'm trying to think of a distributor where you could see them really. Ah! Matter of fact, I've got one here where you can see all that. Okay, here, this is a slant six distributor, but exactly the same thing inside here. That was really great about Chrysler. They shared a lot of the same stuff from one, one engine to another. But let me set the camera up here. I'll show you how this works. Okay, now what's what happens here? You see how now if I'm turning it if you turn this, the, these weights want to fling out because of centrifugal force, okay? The springs pull them back, okay? So when the spring pulls that back and forces it out, or when the weight comes out, it forces the, uh, the you see these pins right here? There's one here, and then there's one here on these weights. Okay, those those pins right there. They force the advance mechanism to advance as these weights fly out. Now, if the weights don't the weights don't fly out uh, like they're supposed to, you can have some strange situations that crop up. You know, the engine won't make power at higher RPMs, and it just kind of lays on its foot and just kind of lays down after a certain rpm you know like say maybe 1500 1800 2000 rpms and it just sort of just lays down you know oh sure you can like accelerate a little bit but you're not really getting anywhere you know you're not really accelerating like you should and especially if you come upon a hill or a mountain or anything it's really being a real just slug it's a real dog you know it's not going anywhere not really making the power like it should so that's what i'm talking about the advanced mechanism if you want to check and see if all of that is good it's easy it's brutally easy all you got to do is twist this because this is not connected to this okay this this cam here okay it can get advanced by the the vacuum advance and by the fly weights in here okay so the, the distributor shaft comes up through here and then there's another shaft that goes down over the top of this one that's what this cam this uh points cam is now your uh, electronic ignition distributor Instead of having this cam, the only difference is it would have a reluctor wheel here, that toothed wheel, okay? They both advance pretty much exactly the same. There's no differences. And if you look very closely, there is like, you can just see past that wire, you can just see one of the advance weights moving when I turn that, when I twist it back and forth, okay? Now, if I couldn't turn that, that would tell me my fly weights are frozen. If you can turn that, that advance mechanism is fine. There's no issues with it. You're good to go. Excuse me for just a minute. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, twisting that uh, rotor button that will get me That'll tell me whether my advance mechanism is frozen or is freed up. 
if it's freed up it will twist back and forth like that if it's frozen it won't so and so also make sure your vacuum advance works too okay and hook to ported vacuum okay so all right i think oh one more other thing one other thing make sure your fuel pump isn't garbage make sure you've got a good supply of clean fuel to your carburetor um make sure the carburetor is not full of garbage and full of dirt um the bowl go back over here if you've got a bunch of crud down in here it'll make its way through the jets that's these little guys right there okay and if it makes its way through those jets into those jets you can plug up the jet so make sure that's in good shape um, make sure you don't have a weak fuel pump so you know, see that jet right there yeah that one right there all right these are removable and replaceable but sometimes they will become uh, yeah that's jet one of the jets right there as well so make sure those aren't plugged if they get plugged or if they get dirt in them they will cause a series of problems you know stumbling and you know poor idle and all kinds of other things so make sure your carburetor is clean okay uh, make sure you got a good decent fuel filter on there if you don't you will have serious problems <sighs> um trying to think if there's anything else that can cause your particular issue uh make sure your time chain isn't worn out uh, they get worn they can have a lot of slop and will cause the cam to advance or retard independently which can affect your distributor ignition timing so make sure that's good you can check that by just rocking your crank here rocking the crank back and forth uh it takes a one and a quarter inch bolt right there by the way rock it back and forth and when you do watch your rotor button if you go so far and you go quite a ways before the distributor move the rotor button moves in the distributor then you know you've probably got a worn out timing chain if you uh if you don't I mean, if you move it and your the rotor button's immediately moving, then of course you're, it's good, no problems. All right, so I think that's pretty much it. You know, they're these are great little engines, and I love them. They're my 318 is my go-to, and uh, the small block, well, the small block Mopar LA. That's and the Magnum. Those are my go-tos. Excellent, excellent engines. So, okay. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. I do tremendously appreciate it. Um, like I said earlier, if you have any other questions in regards to this or anything else, do let me know. I'll be, uh, I love to answer your questions, and I will try to do my very best to answer them and get this information back out to you as soon as humanly possible so thank you so much and god bless have a great one